Um, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, just don't, 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 shut, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Welcome to the Kindness Podcast. I'm Nicole Phillips. There is a unique brand of kindness that helps us move our mind from worry and fear and just basically lighten up. And there's a family who's so, so good at that. And I wonder if you've met them. I'm gonna introduce you to them right now. They are called the Holderness Family. And I would love very much for you to meet my new friends, Kim and Penn. Hi, Holderness Family. Hi, Nicole. Hi. So you two are of the viral video fame, which I feel like I have, our kids have grown up together because I feel like there was something about a minivan like way back in, I don't know, 2008 or something. I don't know. You've done a gazillion of these. But how has this all started? We actually got our start in 20, like end of 2013. Yeah. And it was mostly because our kids at the time went and sit still for those like really picture perfect Christmas card photos that I was like getting in the mail. Yes. And we, we were running yeah. out of time. And I was like, let's just make a video, like a Christmas card video. And we thought like my grandma would watch it and my mom and we like, and then all of a sudden and that was like, and we danced around in our Christmas jammies. And then that got like 17 million views in a week. And that kind of, I mean, no, not, not even kind of, that changed our lives for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, before then we were news reporters and we're kind of in the business of content creation, but more like a sausage factory model where you had to churn two or three pieces of content out every day. And not fun content, like. No, a lot of dead bodies. A lot of murder. Yes. A lot of dead bodies. And I was a reporter and a TV anchor. I get it. I oh, was good. like, I'm right. out. So you're with us. It was, yeah. it was that kind of rat race every day. And um, when our kids started going to school, uh, Kim actually stopped and started a, a a media training company that then turned into a video production company. But I was still working in the news and our kids were going to school. And I never remember, you can't see your kids. It's impossible. You right. either work from two to midnight or you work from 3 a.m. until 11 o'clock. <laughs> he did both of those schedules. And then mm -hmm. once our daughter started going to school and he was going into work at three o'clock, he, he never saw her. And he's like, something's uh, got to change. So yeah. I convinced him, I'm like, I can't, promise I'll be able to pay you, but we had started this video production company. I'm like, just come like shoot and edit videos. Mm -hmm. So that Christmas jammies video, we kind of announced like, Hey, he's quit his job. We're, you know, we had two months of savings. We had no health insurance. I mean, we were like really the thinking about it now, like the jump we took to, for him to quit. Insane. Yeah. I, I cannot believe we did it, yeah. but then that all those people, and then all of a sudden we started getting phone calls and like, we're able to hire people for our company that still exists, by the way, that company still exists and we still do work for it. Um, so it's just, it's crazy how life kind of exploded. Yeah, that was a real quick four minute answer to that You're question. Welcome. You're welcome. I love it. And in, in, in the middle of all that, um, my COVID brain doesn't do math. And so, um, and it doesn't really remember things very well. So it wasn't 2008 in a minivan. It was 2013 with elf pajamas, I think. Yes, close strange. enough. Very close. Pajamas, Very yes. basically the we've same. Never had, we've never had a minivan, but yeah. But Good I think it's time. Good it's time. Job. I'm no shame. I'm like really jealous of people with minivans. No, you're not. No, you're not, Kim. Well, Those are lies. I have a Prius. It's like a golf cart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's all good. So, um, is the whole family on board now? Were they then and are they now? Or are we like, ah, we're teenagers. We don't need to be part of this. Right. So their awareness is certainly up um, of, yeah. of kind of what they're involved in. I think it, you know, early on, it it was, it was, we're making a family video and it's easy to shelter people from other parts of it. Um, it gets challenging when it gets 17 million views and people start kind of hollering at you in the street. But over the last six or seven years, we've kind of stayed true to like a couple of rules. One of which is that they don't have to do this. Yeah, uh, they can they can walk away whenever they want to, and that includes when we do like brand deals and people give us a, a check and say say we want you to do this product. We're like, okay, don't write our kids into this. Right. If they want to do it, they can. Um, and so I, I think having the ability to choose for them has been nice. Um, on top of that, though, I think there is like a little more of an awareness just from the entire world about being a creator and people are doing it at a younger and younger age. Things like TikTok have changed that. So um, they become like a little more a part of the process when they want to. But we certainly are changing the type of videos that we're doing. We're not going to dance around in the, in the driveway in our pajamas because Lola would she's 13. 
<laughs> she'd lose her and mind. So, yeah. so the question we get, I think most frequently are like, what do your kids think of all this? Yeah. And our because the content we create is, and even with COVID when they were learning at home, we try to work a traditional work schedule. So we're working, we're making these silly videos when they're at school. So it's usually just us and our kids mm -hmm. kind of pop in for appearances. They, they at this point, really want to be in the videos. They really want to have say so because I joke they're coin operated yeah. because any video they're in, they check the monetization or they check and they get paid. We pay them. They have their own accounts and they have, they check their balances, like they're coin operated. They want, and our son started a YouTube gaming channel. Like we turn the comments off. It is under our umbrella. We don't, we watch everything, but we're not like hovering over that type of content. My da our daughter's creating on TikTok. And it's, it's a pretty cool process to create something out of nothing. And so in that way, our kids have kind of started in the family business with no pressure. Like there's yeah. no pressure to grow an audience or make yeah. money or any of that. We, like we should also clarify, they are embarrassed of us, but. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Cause otherwise you're like. No, they're, I mean. No, they're, they're embarrassed of us. Yeah. I mean, not just cause of what we do on YouTube. We're just, I'm just very. I know anytime obnoxious. I like ask for directions in public, you know, Lola's like, ma, shh. Oh my gosh. Oh, they, they oh find my. us unbearable. Well, I saw a bunch yeah. of kids riding their bikes on our street and I was driving like seven miles an hour because I saw them coming. They're like 10 year old boys and they didn't have helmets on. And I drive a Prius, which is super quiet. And they pulled out in front of me and like they almost hit my car because they didn't hear me and I was driving so slowly. So I stopped and I rolled the window down. I'm like, you guys don't have helmets on. You need to watch where you're going. You're on the wrong side of the road. I and think my, I was embarrassed. At that my point daughter as well, like so. crawled down into the seat. She's like, no. So they're, I mean, they're horrified by us, but you know, those kids should be wearing helmets. Oh my God. And that's right. Riding their That's bike right. Their bike. They were on the wrong side of the road. Okay. It was the whole okay. Thing. Anyway. Okay. All right. Anyway. So you they're... talk about like serious, serious things, right? This is like, I can tell you're passionate about stuff. I mean, wicked funny, but there's gotta be smarts behind that as well. So I'm wondering, do you guys have to have serious conversations about things in your house, like coronavirus and wear your mask and all of those things before you can turn around and be like, hysterical about it um i guess sort of you no. don't have to say yes you can no, say no I, I, I we never I, have serious I, conversations it's, I, I i i don't think that we have had a serious conversation in five years that's not true um no about no about about the content that we're doing not about the content i yeah. think that like 2020 because our daughter's 13 and she's on TikTok and there's a lot of social justice trends on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. And so she is so self-aware and she is so aware of what's happening around us that I think all of the conversations we have with her right now about the election, about social justice issues, about wearing a mask, about believing in science, about all of these things, like we've had more serious discussions about that yeah. in 2020, when it comes to our content, it, it is weird that like we almost had to take a stand by saying you should wear a mask. And that became a political statement for a while there. So we had to have those discussions about like, how do we, how are we, do we stay true to who we are, but still like make people laugh with it? Yeah. To that point. Yes. When, like when it comes to, to taking a stand, um, we, so you know this because you have a, a platform as well. You you look at the people who ingest your plat, who use your platform, who who consume your content, and you can see their makeup and their demographics on Facebook, and you, you can see analytics of who it is that's watching you, where they're from. Um, you can pretty much guess what they believe in. Facebook is this like heavily divided community, and. Um, the odds are that like you're going to have half and half who are part of your platform and the nation's very divided. So we have tried to sort of stay up. I don't want to say above it, away from it um, and just entertain people. But there are a couple of things that happened this year that should go into the no duh category that shouldn't divide the country. They should be super duper obvious whether or not they are. We happen to believe they should be no duh um, <laughs> beliefs. You know, yeah. Black Lives Matter, wear a mask. Those should be like, everyone should be saying that. And so, um, you know, I, I think that was kind of the first time we took a, a more strong stand when it came to that. And it felt pretty good. Lost a few viewers. Bye. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to miss you. Um, yeah. But we yeah. felt a responsibility with that. So we had some yeah. conversations because privately we've been very active in our community. Yeah. But just felt like 
Uh, who needs to hear from us? We're like some middle-aged white people. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to hear that from us. Like, this is not where we're not here to lecture you or whatever. But it's like, no, we're actually the exact people you need to hear it from. So we did. We, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we tried it. Like, our goal is to be funny and to entertain and to bring some light. Um, the, you, you should, like, know who we are. And that's right. who we are at our core. I, I have had people on social media, um, you know, say nasty things. And my husband always says, if you can be mean to the kindness lady, like goodness gracious, but, but I, and, I, and you know, when I, when I engage in conversations with some of those people, they'll say to me, well, you have too many cheerleaders. You need someone to keep you down to earth. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, nope, no, I don't like that is what my children do. My head. <laughs> yeah. That's what my, yeah. That's what the other half of my head says. So I know, I know personally, there is a cost for doing what you do. There's a cost for putting yourself out there every single day. And I'm wondering what, what is the cost for you and why is it worth it? Because this is such an immense source of kindness. So why? Well, so the, the cost is you're going to, that you're going to take some people off. Um, and they're going to let you know, because that is the way of the world now. And I think that's fine. I think people should be able to comment. Um, we get a lot of shut up and sing when we try to <laughs> do that. And, um, you know, that's to me, not, uh, first of all, I don't believe I, I learned this with help of some other creators like Jen Hatmaker helped teach me this Donald Thompson from diversity movement helped teach me that like, as a white male, I got to say something right now. Like it's, you can't sit back and be silent about this right now. And that was kind of my, you know, what I used to say before is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not part of this. Um, I, I'd rather like stop and listen to other people. I did stop and listen for a while, but then I had a lot of really smart people tell me you have an important voice when it comes to this. And so that made me feel really good to be able to say something and say how I feel and maybe make a difference when it came to that. The cost is once you get into that fray, not only do you hear from people about yourself, you have this thread of comments on Facebook where everyone's fighting with each other and all of a sudden it turns into a battleground. And just like you, we want to be positive. And unfortunately, it's impossible to be 100 percent that. And so you get this you get some anxiety. The cost is a bit of anxiety when it comes to that. And I know you feel it. Well, I don't know if you were asking about just in general content creation and like the cost of that or just taking a public stance on social issues. Um, but I will say that like it is we've gotten I have gotten better because I'm a very I've been pretty public that I've you know, I walk with anxiety and depression. And so that's kind of part of my daily life. But I think that the beauty of the Internet is the comment section, which is which is actually it, it flies in the face of a lot of people saying don't read the comments. I think the community that's been created in the comment section is through this. So for any time we do a goofy video and somebody responds like, wow, this made me laugh today. Just reading that it helps somebody helps me in a very selfish way. Like yeah, totally. to give that has made me, has helped me every single day because this is a drag man. We thought this was going to be all this COVID stuff was going to be wrapped in May. In June at the latest, and we're discovering just like it's death by a thousand cuts. Like the, it's the school decisions. It's you know just everything being canceled for our kids. It's just helping our kids kind of walk this new reality and how long it's going to take. So I think the community of that has been great, but the sacrifice, just like Penn says, is uh, uh, just anytime we we. I mean, let me tell you, just even saying wear a mask, you have no idea the messages we get about your fear mongering and your hate mongers and they get very political and very ugly. And so it's just learning to breathe through that delete. I mean, the delete button has become my friend. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. Going in a, well on that point still, Kim, you wrote an amazing blog article. Well, uh, they're all amazing. So everyone just go and read Kim's blog, do that. Thank you. So good. And um, and now you're writing a book. We've it's written, written a book. It's written. Oh, it's written a book. It's it written. Is, we wrote the last three chapters in quarantine <laughs> and it's uh, it'll be released in March. It's called Everybody Fights. And it's about our, our walk. And we wrote it with our marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. So we, we learned we've learned a lot about 
marriage. I mean, like we, we joke that like in dog years, we've been, we've been married for like a hundred years because we live together, work together, raise kids together. And it's about these fights that every couple has and how to walk through them. And we wrote the last three champ chapters in quarantine together. So it's, um, there's some real singers in there. It, yeah. It's so, and also the publisher that we worked with, they're great. They're Harper Collins. They, I think, um, that when we first brought it to them, I think I think they were they felt the same way most people do because marriage counselor books are usually called like they're called like the final straw, and it's yeah. like a it's a woman like staring at the covers, like a woman staring out a window, doing this, and it's like <laughs> oh wow, stuff has gotten real, and um, so our book is not that it's it's uh, it's what we believe is a good marriage that still needs maintenance because for some reason. The, the 50% of marriages that don't end in divorce don't really undergo any type of maintenance. Um, and, you know, it's that we use the metaphor of having a car and taking it in for an oil change, whether or not it's performing poorly or not. Um, a marriage is more important than a car. Why don't we take a look at it and learn how to meta communicate with each other and take like a 30,000 view of fights and conversations that we have? And so we we kind of believed it in our souls that we were doing something right a couple of years ago when we worked together and found our way through these fights. But then our marriage counselor and our editor kind of helped us really ex like explain what it is that we're doing and turn it kind of into a textbook for when you get into and you know, like, these squabbles in your yeah, marriage. Yeah, it includes scripts and conversations because we believe fighting is a love language yeah. and you can actually like get stronger when you fight, so. Are we using all of our little catchphrases? Are you hearing some of them? Love language. And, but, yeah. There's some magic words that you can say. Oh, yeah. oh. You want me to yeah. give you one really quickly? Yeah, yeah, I do. Tell me more. Tell me more. Oh. Tell me more. Yeah. I thought it was, sure, honey. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> that's, you want, honey. that's, that's yeah. the old passive yeah. aggressive. Yes, hand. dear is not Whatever. Good. Yes, dear. Sure. Is, yes, dear. Yeah. Is I was like, uh, yeah, I can, um, I'm the president <laughs> of passive aggressive um, I I corporation. I some, yeah, I have some of that too. Um, so we're both learning. Great. Well, Kim, maybe I don't know in your relationship who brings like the the real goofy energy, the real craziness. But I'll tell you, in my relationship, it's my husband. Like if he's on if, if he's on the court coaching basketball, it's like laser vision, like mm -hmm. game face, you know. But when he's in our house, he's crazy. He is silly. He's just and I love that about him. But sometimes I just want him to be quiet. Like, stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. I don't want to play right now. Do you ever feel that way about your husband? So you're just assuming that I'm the crazy energy one? <laughs> well, because you went like... No, I, 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 no you're feeling um, right. right. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> I've discovered part of my... One of my like anxiety triggers is just noise. Yeah. And there are moments when I just need not noise. And so that's when we, that's uh, honestly, we, we've, we've worked on it. So if I need space, then I just like create space. And I say, listen, um, I need 30 minutes and I'm going to go over here by me. And he doesn't, he doesn't get offended by it. He doesn't, but I, I actually, it is so cool to see, cause he is the goofball. And I always joke, I have three kids because he's kind of the ringleader. And I'm so yeah. I'm a little jealous of my kids cause I'm staring and they're at dinner and they're like, laughing goofing and like like throwing food across the table which i never would have done like we never did growing up and i'm like i'm kind of jealous that they have this experience as i'm sitting there thinking who's gonna clean this up <laughs> I, I get kind of annoyed by it but um really it's i'm glad he's i'm glad he's my, my golden retriever i i have half of my brain that's just so so thankful for the relationship that my kids have with my husband and half of my brain that's like I am not picking this up. Does everyone know that I am not the one that's going to be picking this up? So, um, okay. So my sister-in-law was here and she helped me put together all kinds of, she's, she is your a number one fan. I, I am, I am your, uh, what would that be? B number two fan. I don't know. Um, but she had some things that she really wanted me to ask you. So what's her name? Uh, so we can address her. Correct. Her name is Joan, Joan Harms. Joan Harms. I love that. Her last name, name is Harms. Harms, yeah. It's, she Harms. sounds like an actress, Joan Harms. Or a professional wrestler. <laughs> like. well, in the funny, this is a little spooky, but people, we grew up in the same small town and people always said that she and I looked like sisters. They would uh, confuse us for sisters a lot. So then when I was like, I don't know, 24 and I married her brother, <laughs> um, that just felt weird to people, I think. And, yeah. and a little weird to him that he maybe married his, um, her. Yeah, he married his sister. We're going down that road. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's good. 
stuff. So she really wanted to know, how do you blend the need to laugh with the poignancy of things that we fear the most? Because honestly, every time I open up one of your videos, I'm like, dude, I totally was thinking that. Like, I am the, the mask mom. I am the wash your hands. Don't touch that. Or even... You know, all of the other ones that you've done when you've done, um, I'm trying to think of real specific ones, but you've done some parodies of songs and things like that, that maybe have nothing to do with COVID, um, but they really hit at the fears and the worries that hide in the back of our brains that we don't want to tell anyone we think. Yeah. So, I, I, where I, where does that come from? Uh, and we, fear. Fear. Well, we had a real conversation at the beginning <laughs> yeah. of all of this, the COVID stuff, especially that should we, we never wanted to make fun of the virus, right? So that we were getting lots of requests for like making fun of the coronavirus itself. So we never wanted to like, because of how serious it was. So we did like one or two videos and we're like, ooh, that maybe that's it. Maybe should we just steer clear of it because every, I don't want to make light of how serious it is. And then we realized mm -hmm. that like everything we've ever done, the more authentically we share what's going on in our house and our brain, like chances are if it's in my brain, it's in yours. If it's an anxiety I'm having, you're having it. And so the more we authentically share, the more I feel like it helps people relate. I think. Yes. Uh, the whole, the whole COVID thing um, is it's fear. It's a hundred percent fear where we have been living and look, it's real. It's an under, I'm not saying it's an irrational fear, but we, we are all very afraid right now. Um, and I think if we're all afraid together, um, there's this natural desire to laugh um, when you're sharing misery. Uh, and so that's the last two or three months. And Kim's right. Like we, we kind of dipped our toe in the water at first and then realized, wow, everyone needs a chance to not only take a look at their lives and see someone who's going through the same thing that they are, but also maybe like smile for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, it was very blending those two things together was very natural because everyone is feeling fear right now. Mm -hmm. Still, okay. like we thought this would be over, but we're still it's still happening. Right. Kim thought like, May, that's a wrap. We're done with that. Right? Yeah, the kids go back to school, wrap up the school year. We'll go on yeah. vacation. Yeah. yeah. Nope. 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 So Hard. how quickly can you turn around something that, that pops up in your head? If you're listening to a song and you think, oh, I have new lyrics for that. Like how quickly does that process okay. develop for you? It's got to be quick. Yeah. So uh, like we're very, because we worked in the news business, right? Like yeah. we read headlines yeah. and then we go from there. So yesterday... <laughs> This is a random example. Yeah, this is yeah. So, so we, we're we're recording this on Friday. Maybe she doesn't want August. people. Well, we're, okay, we're recording this on the day that Nickelback made an announcement. Yes. Which turned out to be like a parody of a Charlie Daniels song, but they made the announcement yesterday, and the internet blew up, like roasting them for like, why are you making an announcement right now? And so, so Penn's like, we should do a, par a medley of if Nickelback was written in 2020. So he wrote it in about 30 minutes, like a medley of songs. He recorded it from technical issues. It took like two hours. Usually it takes like an hour to like yeah. record it and edit it. And then it went out this morning. So the same with the Hamilton parody that we did. Oh, it was, loved that. Wasn't loved that great? It. He was, it was literally me going, Hamilton's coming out on Disney Plus. You should write like if Hamilton was written in 2020. Again, he, I mean, the music's there. So he has this weird brain. He wrote it on the couch in 15 minutes. He kind of read it back to me and said, do you think this is good? I was like, oh my gosh. So like he recorded it one day, we put it out the next day. So it's a very, like we react quickly to that. But we're not doing high production, like old school, like yeah. fog machine type videos. It's it's good. Like, they're good enough. They're good enough. Our videos are good they're enough. They're fine. They're Our, just they're good enough. They're fine. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're not going for perfection. We're just kind of, I mean, we're just kind of getting it out. And it's the style, you know, it, it is the style we expect from you. And so it looks like perfection, right? It looks like this must have taken days to put together. Um, oh, Joan Harms had another question I have to ask you. Okay. okay. This one's for you, Penn. Joan Harms wanted to know, were you ever a professional singer? No. 
like professionally yeah. trained? Were you on Broadway? She just thinks you're this well, the most amazing voice ever. Well, thank you, Joan. So there's some auto tune involved, and thank you, Joan. Um, there's this great little button you can push on your computer that if you're a little bit flat, it just kind of lifts you up. It's like plastic surgery for your voice. <laughs> um, but uh, but I I did. So here's my history. I was in like a boys choir for two years when I was a kid. Um, and then after that, I did a lot of like show choir stuff yeah. back when it wasn't cool. Like back oh, yeah, we know we were there. Joan yeah. Harms and I were both in it. Yep. Right. So I was in a competitive show choir group that went to like uh, we went to Munich, we went to Spain and London, and I'm sure they were like, "Who are these Americans?" But you know, we're jazz a lot hands of jazz. And jazz and hands. He, he wondered right why he didn't really have success with the girl with the ladies. That <laughs> I would have dated kind of, kind of busy with my show choir and my synthesizers. Yeah. So, no, but, but, and then I, um, in college, I was in an acapella group. Actually, they were, it was one of the acapella groups that was featured in Pitch Perfect. So I kept the kind of vocal part going a little bit. And then um, when I got into news, that was, that was it. I didn't really have, it stopped then. Um, but, you know, the opportunity to start singing and rapping and doing all that stuff when it came up as a possibility for being part of our family. I was really excited because it was a big part of me growing up, but I was never professional would mean I got paid for it. So no, I was never. Yeah. Well, never. I love the fact that it's, that's reemerged. It's come back and it's been part of your life. So I need to let you both go very soon, but I have one more question that I love um, very much to hear from people. And that is what's your favorite kindness story? Is there a time when you did an act of kindness that you're like, man, that felt so good. Everyone should try that. Or a time when, you know, kindness showed up at just the right moment. Um, I'm, I'm not that, I don't, I'm he's not, not that, that nice. I'm not that nice. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, that, I'm not as kind no, as, I, I as think, Nicole. I think that there have been, we've been lucky to experience such tr tremendous kindness. And that there's a story that sticks out for a couple stories that stick out for me that, um, but when we moved to North Carolina from New York City, we had our daughter was a baby and I'd never. And so in, in New York City, like you grab stuff from a market or you have a groceries, like they'll bring them like kind of delivered. So I'd never gone grocery shopping with my daughter, like in the in the buggy. You know what I mean? I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to like, do I take her out and put her in the car and leave her in the car? Well, it, it just didn't make any sense to me because I hadn't, I hadn't had a car seat like before. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Yeah. And so this um this and it was like the the grocery store was on a hill so the carts like <laughs> sliding and there's my baby and my groceries and i'm like freaking out and i see this man running over to me and i like grab my baby and i was like thinking he was coming he's like no 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 i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna help you i'm just gonna you put your baby in the car i'm gonna he knew i was struggling i'll unload your groceries like he unloaded my groceries and he's like i'll take the cart back it's fine like and it was just like a like that's exactly what I needed at that moment. And so we have always looked for like tiny ways to help people. And I think like our daughters now, she's the most most empathetic human on the planet. Yeah. Like she, I'll brag on her for a second. Like she, she saved all of her allowance to go buy this and she's 13. There's like this fancy vanity mirror she wanted that like obviously we weren't gonna buy for her. So she saved all of her allowance to buy this like LED, whatever. And we were on, this just happened last month and we were on our way to Bed Bath & Beyond to go buy it. And in the parking lot was a family holding a sign that said like, they'd been kicked out. They were living in a hotel. They'd lost their jobs. And she's like, pull over. And she stopped the car and then I was gonna make me cry. And then she just gave him all her allowance. And I was like, I didn't tell her to do that. I didn't ask her to do that, but she just like knew to do that. And she's like, oh, it's fine. I can, the, the mirror is stupid. I'll get it later. So I just thought that, um, Please tell me you bought her the mirror. And if you didn't, can I, can I buy that for her? I, Did anyone the, buy it for I her? bought her the she's mirror. Got, she's got the mirror. I bought her the Yay. mirror. Um, Yay. But she, but she wasn't doing that with the hope that I would, no. you know, but no. she, um, and so she, we, she cannot walk past a person in need without no. like, we have to like, if we, God, if we, we got to stop what we're doing, we have to stop what we're doing. We have to turn around. We have to buy a meal, and not we not almost have got to. in a car wreck the other day. And she was like, yeah. she's like, turn around, turn yeah. around, and so she has these little baggies with granola bars and hand sanitizers and face masks. She hands out. So like, witnessing her do that has been yeah such a gift, and I, and um yeah, she's she's an amazing and, human. Yeah, I I mean, I like to think we help teach her that, but like some of it is just like she's, she's been way doing better than us. Yeah. Um, I. I have a, I could tell a quick story, but I don't know if like that was a good one. It's not going to be, 
<laughs> you can tell a second best story, Penn. It's okay. We'll take your second best. So, so I just want to, I want to brag on my son now too, because he's 10 and he's a boy and he should just be caring about video games and, um, you know, basketball or whatever. Um, so I, I, we took him to like a social distancing friendly uh, basketball clinic, right? Like right as COVID started like winding down. It didn't wind down, but it sort of did. And he came home one day and he had been bullied by a guy uh, on the, on the court. Um, and he was like, he was like throwing balls at him. He took his ball and he threw it away. And Penn Charles was a little sad about it. And I said, um, I said, well, just ignore him. Because if you ignore a bully, he's just going to move on to the next person. And he's like, okay. And um, so the next day I check with him again and it, the exact same thing happened. And I was like, did you ignore him? And he said, no. And I said, why not? He said, because he was going to move on to the next person. I know. Um, Stab and I, the heart. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, dude. Yeah. That's like for a 10 year old. So our, like, I'm our really, kids are way better than us. And this is like, all, we go get yeah, them. They're yeah. way better. This yeah. is all during a really tough time for the world and a really easy time to be selfish and they're handling it better than we are. I've said that like our kids right now, their resilience, their strength through all this is like, like it's inspiring to me just how they, I mean, cause he's, I mean, yes, they have a roof over their head. They have food. Like, and I, but I don't, I don't ever belittle the fact that like, everything that's important in their lives. And they're young. So like this is a big portion of their lives was just kind of taken away from them, their friendships, their sleepovers, like little stuff. So um, I just, I think the kindness that they've been able to show through all this has been really inspiring. Yeah. Well, and I always feel like kindness is, um, you know, I say the life you transform with kindness is your own, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so that at the end of the day, the one who's really changed by your act of kindness is yourself. And so they are developing that in themselves and they're spreading it to you and making it even more important than I know it already is to you. And, and isn't it precious to be able to see that through our people? So beautifully said. You two are the perfect antidote to what is going on right now in this world. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out to talk with me today on the kindness podcast. Well, Thank you for such a positive facing thing that you do. Yeah. Thank you. We need more kindness in this world. And um, uh, it is, um, it, 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 sometimes it's hard, it, it's, it's hard to lead through laughter and kindness, but I, like you were saying selfishly, if, if we didn't have this, then I don't know where we'd be. And um, so I wrote a book called the negativity remedy. It I'm I just from Baker publishing. They just sent me a notice saying your your copies are arriving. And so um, I don't know that I have your address, but can I send you one? Do you mind? You don't need to do anything with it or share it or do anything. I would love like, to read it. I would, love I would just to like to share it and, and just give it to you. So and we'll do the same thing for you when ours comes out. Um, I but would love it. Well, now I'll tell everybody about that one because they need to read that. Do you want to well, tell me your address right now or do you want to text it to me? No, I can say it as, um, as long as this isn't on the um, on the, on the video. Hold on, 